this next part, there's two ways of carrying on, at least there, there are for the situation. Or, yeah, there are two ways of carrying on for the situation we've got here. And it all depends on the architecture that you're building on and what architecture you're targeting. Um, basically, if the architecture you're building on is the same as the architecture you're targeting, similar enough, not, not the same, but similar enough, then you can carry on building with a Chroot environment as you do in Linux from scratch. If it's vastly different, for example, if I was building this on a, a, a targeting, say, an, an ARM or uh, a Spark or something like that, a Spark processor, then we'd have to go down the boot route where we created a system where we, we've got a very basic system to boot into and just the temporary tools that we've just built and the remainder of the build, the live system will be built from there actually on the target machine. And obviously for 486 this would take a long time if we were to follow that route and as we are building using a similar technology, a 64-bit, but it's Intel x86 technology, we can actually carry on using the troop method. We can carry on building on this fast system with multiple cores. Um, and it's just advantageous to carry on that way. But we could, if we wanted to, go go for a boot, and it would be a probably a safer way of building, because as I said before, it would be building natively from that point on, so it would be a little bit safer. But we should be okay to carry on with the troot. Um, and it says about, if you're in any doubt about how this works, follow commands, can see if you can troot. So let's run these two programs. And that's obviously worked. And that obviously has worked. And it makes sense because all processors, all the Intel processors in the x86 family, right from the uh, first 8086, all right up to the latest i7, uh, is it 9 series we're at at the moment, um, uh, are backward compatible. So that 9 series will run the same code that every previous generation can run. And that's what we've got here. We've got an i7, uh, I think it's a 4 series CPU that's quite capable of running 486 code. So we should be all right to go down the troop method. So let's click on that one. So what we've got to do now is become the root. So we're not going to be in the CLFS user anymore. So let's just come out of that by doing control D. You see so we're back to the mint, uh, sorry, the root um, user, the default root user that we were. So let's, before we carry on, let's just double check we've got CLFS set. I'm sure we will have, but let's let's be sure. And we have, so we can carry on starting to build the basic system that we will use finally when we uh, boot into it. So bind a few virtual systems and the devices. So that's all done. Now we need to determine what steps we need to take to actually um, boot into the true environment. And it's saying about um, whether or not the host and the target have the same triplet or not and obviously ours hasn't so um, what it says we can do to test this is to extract auto make so let's do that go into the directory and then run this uh, I guess it's a script and it reports the target triplet um, obviously of the running machine so it says here if it doesn't equal the CLFS target which it won't do if we echo alright okay we haven't got that now have we let's quick
quickly go into the CLFS user to view that, to see what it was. You see that's our target, the triplet that we, we chose. You can see that that script produced the target of the host effectively and it's not the same. So we've got to try another option which is this command called setarch and obviously that's not working because it's come back although it's come back with 32-bit architecture it's come back with i686 and it does it actually say that this may solve the problems if you're building for an i686 but if you're building for a 486 or an i586 which is what we're doing it's not good enough so for, for example we're building for a Pentium Pro or a Pentium 2 or 3 then that would be sufficient to go down that route and it tells you how to create a script there to see what would um, happen oh, sorry to to use the truth with that set arch command so we've got to use this last option which is to use a hack basically which is um, it's a little bit of code which creates a module that we insert um, and it, it confuse or it doesn't confuse the kernel it convinces the kernel to report um, basically the false architecture so we need to get hold of this file so let's go back to our sources grab hold of that that package and let's extract it see it's tiny it's only one one C file basically in a, a make file to compile it and it says here what we do is we do make and you name hack fame machine as a target for make and we set the parameter to the processor we want to build so if it was an ordinary Pentium basic Pentium or Pentium MMX you do i586 I'm targeting a 486 so that's the parameter that I pass into that that option so that's built now and you can see it's created this kernel module here and all we do is we do is we insert that module into the running kernel and now if I go back to the auto make directory and run the original lib config guest script it now magically reports an i486 because this bit of code inserted this module it's intercepting the requests for the machine type and it's just reporting back a flat uh, 486 irrespective of what we're actually running on so that kind of fools any any code that does the uname so if I do uname minus M you see it's now got 486 if I remove that module and do you name minus M you see it's gone back to the 64 bit x86 architecture so insert it again oh it's not in this directory it's in this one insert it again and do the U name you see it's come back with i486 so that's how we can continue now because it's we we're getting back the right um, target architecture so remove the automate directory and we can carry on so we've got a true command here I'm going to change the PS1 to include some color again because it just makes it easier to see the start of any command you type in or any output so I'm just going to put in some of these um, ANSI codes to change the color of the prompt but this time I'm going to use red because we're going to be roots while we're building to 
just type this carefully because it's a bit like gibberish. So then we can copy the rest of that prompt. And the rest of this tree command should work. So let's hopefully, yep, that's worked. Yep, that's good. So we're going to change the ownership of the tools and the cross tools for the reasons it says there, possibly a security hazard. And now we install some directories for our base system. And again, really should put these in separately, but you can see they're just making directories. There's nothing too taxing. Again, with these, normally should enter them separately, but you can quickly scan down and see there's no errors, so that's fine. One final one here. Now we create a default password file. A default group file. And create some default files for the system for logging in. And then we just restart the login, just get rid of that I have no name because it's now now got the root. 